goal is to build a dense network of sanitation units in slums around Kenya. From there, we'll use a low-cost infrastructure to transport the waste to intermediate processing plants. Trucks will then transport the semi-processed waste to a central plant where it will be processed into energy and fertilizer. The energy can then be sold to the national grid and the fertilizer to farms. This is part of Sanergy's complete system that starts with sanitation and ends with energy. At each step, Sanergy creates job opportunities and profit while addressing serious social economic needs. By reinvesting province into infrastructure, Sanergy's system can benefit more people. In the summer of 2010, we started plans on our first units. We had to consider issues like waste access, cleanability, and modular panel construction. We traveled to Kenya where I connected with the Fab Lab there and local partners like Tom Adoyo and Kenneth Awade. There's a blessing to be there on the ground in Kenya, not only for that reason, but because we were able to improvise and push through any problems that had arisen that we hadn't foreseen during the design process. And with a little bit of work and extra hours we put in, we were able to get a structurally stable and working product on the ground. So I was really happy with that. Have you ever been to Yele in Sierra Leone? Probably not. It's a small village of 5,000 people left war-torn after the brutal civil war. Although today the war is over, Sierra Leone still has one of the lowest life expectancies in the world. There is no food, no work, no electricity. What can you do? We can do something about that. Project Yale's vision is to create sustainable economic development powered by the people themselves. Through this development, the quality of life of local people is enhanced in an independent and sustainable way. Now this is how it works. We build a hydroelectric power plant. Then we build a community bazaar where the electricity can be used by everybody who wants to create a small workshop. People can use electricity to create new and more efficient businesses. The new businesses add value. Value creates money and income. The income can be spent on other businesses. And that is how the economy is kick-started. Going to Yale as an engineering student showed me that not only should we do something, but we actually can do something. So Yale will be the first village in Sierra Leone to have electricity. And with a little bit of help, it will be used in the best possible way. Defecation is in the open. Traditional stigmas weigh them down. Awareness is just another word. And sanitation, the last thing on their minds. This is the life of 900,000 slum women in Delhi. Project Sanitation Solutions seeks to provide a helping hand to these unfortunate women. The project aims at ensuring the use of hygienic sanitary napkins by women in slums across Delhi by providing them a sustained means of livelihood and better standard of living. The business model aims at procuring sanitary napkins at a minimal price for a handful of enterprising slum women by establishing a direct network between them and sanitary napkin manufacturers. These women then sell these napkins to others in their community at a slightly higher price, thereby ensuring a sustainable source of income for themselves.
Malo in Bambara means rice. As such, our name combines the lingua franca of West Africa with the lingua franca of the global economy. Africa one day will not merely feed itself, but will also help feed the rest of the world. Our plan is to build facilities that stores, processes, and fortifies rice grown by small-scale farmers. Our product is creative and innovative because we will establish the first brand of rice grown in Mali. We are citizens of Mali and grew up in Eastern and Central Africa. Today, I am a PhD candidate specializing in international relations at Purdue University, and my brother is a senior studying entrepreneurship and international business economics at Temple University. Combined with our life experiences and unique insights, we have what it takes to implement our project successfully. By combining existing technology with a domestic and international marketing strategy, we will finally open up global markets and opportunities to small-scale rice farmers. During a field mission to Mali's biggest rice producing region, my brother witnessed firsthand the devastating consequences of the risk of wasted and spoilage of rice harvested by small-scale farmers. Opportunistic businessmen swindled them out of making any profit on their harvest because they lacked the bargaining power that comes with having appropriate storage facilities and processing equipment. Each year, 38,000 tons, enough to feed 580,000 people for a year, goes to waste. We can put an end to this tragedy. With your support, let's make hungry farmers an answer. Nairobi, Kenya, the African capital of 3.5 million people, produces 1,900 tons of waste per day. But in Nairobi, only one third of all waste is collected for proper disposal. The rest remains uncollected. Our goal is to establish a socially driven waste management company in Nairobi. Recycling and composting can win back resources while reducing greenhouse gas emissions. This then also creates job opportunities for the poor and makes the environment cleaner and healthier. Clients will separate their waste into organic and inorganic fractions. Youth groups will then collect the separated waste against payment. They will sell the collected waste to Takataka Taka Solutions. For this purpose, Takataka Taka Solutions will operate decentralized waste processing facilities called Takataka Taka Points. There, the organic waste will be composted to organic fertilizer. The organic fertilizer will be sold to farmers. The recyclable waste, paper, plastic, glass and metal will be sold to recycling industries. By 2015, Takataka Taka Solutions will serve 150,000 clients. It will create 1,600 sustainable jobs, collect 80,000 tons of waste and save 20,000 tons of CO2 emissions per year. I believe that this project chain Waruku is just the beginning and will serve as a model to the other parts of Kenya. Because Takataka Taka itself is not only a problem, but it's something that can also be overturned to become a resource. <laughs>